Fort Bliss is comprised of 33,793 soldiers, 12,426 civilians, and 117,910 family members, retirees, and survivors. Several directorates have been established to serve the needs of our installation and the operation of those uh, in the installation is commanded by our garrison commander. Today on the radar with Fort Bliss MWR, we talk to the garrison commander. Stick around, this is episode 10. Welcome to On the Radar with Fort Bliss MWR. Today's episode, I am welcoming a very special guest, uh, the Fort Bliss Garrison Commander, Colonel Steve Murphy. Thank you so much for coming by. Yep. Thanks, Chris. Um, I have a couple of questions, and I guess we'll just get right to it. Um, what advice would you give a family who's finding out right now that they are about to PCS to Fort Bliss? Well, one, I'd say welcome to Fort Bliss, um, and that we're looking forward to having you. Um, and I'll, I'll make an assumption that uh, this family has uh, got some school age kids. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so what we've always done in our house is we've always looked at schools first. So look at where you want your kids want to go to school and then find a house that can accommodate where they want to go to school. And then thirdly, uh, look at the things that are going to be available to you uh, where, at your new duty station. So a lot of things going on here at Fort Bliss and I think we'll probably talk about a lot of those. Yes. So I won't go into those just yet. Um, so what are some of the things, though, outside the gate that um, soldiers and families coming to Fort Bliss should know about? Yeah, there's lots of great things going on here at, in El Paso. And, and one of the things that I'd like to start with is just explaining the, the, the fact that El Paso is one of the safest cities to live in in America. Not very well known. There's a lot of untruths that are out there, but it's a great place to raise a family. It's a great place with lots of activities going on. And it really depends on what interests you because you can, you can do a lot of different things here. So if you're an outdoorsman, there's the Franklin Mountains. You can do some hiking and biking there. There's Waco tanks that you can do some hiking and biking. Uh, so outdoors, there are all kinds of things to do. And then if you're interested in sports, we've got University of Texas El Paso, UTEP. That's got all the Division I sports. They're very competitive in, in a lot of those sports. Uh, we also have three minor league teams, the, the Chihuahuas, which is our baseball team. Uh, we just are an inaugural season of the El Paso Locomotives, which is a minor league soccer team. And then we also have a hockey team, the, the Rhinos. So sports activities are available to you there. And then also, you know, if you want to uh, shop, there's all kinds of activities that you can shop. We've got the Fountains, uh, which is a brand new uh, outdoor mall complex that we've got uh, in El Paso. And then we have an outlet mall out there. And then one of the newest attractions, which, uh, newest attractions we have in El Paso is Top Golf, which is uh, about a year old now, and it's one of the top grossing Top Golfs in the nation. Great opportunity to go out and spend some time with some friends and family. That was a big opportunity for El Paso getting that it Top was. Golf. It was great. Um, and so, what are your impressions of MWR prior to becoming the Garrison Commander, and did it change at all once you took command? Yeah, so I, just for, for a point of clarity, I'm a military brat. So I grew up in the military, uh, did, uh, uh, my father was a 26 year officer. And so, and I've, I think I've been in the military now for, for close to 46 years. So I got the opportunity to see it as a kid. I got the opportunity to see it as a soldier and as an officer. And now I get to see it as a garrison commander. And what I, what I would tell you is when you're not involved and you don't see behind the curtain, you just see the way that the service is delivered. And my history, it's always been great service. MWR has done, always done a great job. But I think being a garrison commander, being able to see behind the curtain all the work that goes into delivering that service, sure. and you get to see and interact with the great employees like you and, and the team here at, at Fort Bliss MWR, you recognize the amount of passion that goes into the way they deliver the service and, and to see all the uh, hard work that goes into it. That's the thing, the, the thing I take away as a garrison commander. Excellent. Um, Excellent. We do uh, love our jobs. We really do. And it shows. Um, so our job at the MWR marketing department is to promote activities and services for soldiers and families. Um, and what would you recommend for new soldiers and families to become better informed? One of the biggest challenges that I have as a garrison commander, and I know one of the biggest challenges we've got in MWR is how do we make people aware of what's going on on the installation? Because Always. there's so many great things going on on the installation. So there's two places that you can go to to get well informed about what's going on on the installation. And that I would tell you to point to the MWR website and then also point to all the publications that MWR has um, on and, and where they're at in their social media. So getting involved with the Facebook page 
and then their website would be the two areas that you can look to to get up to the minute updates on activities that MWR is offering. And it's, it's a, such a great wide array of, of activities. You really need to have a place to go to to figure out what's going on. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree. It's, it's great to have like a central hub um, and we try very hard with our website to, to offer that. Right, and that's I, if I want to know what's going on on the installation, I'll go to the MWR website, <laughs> look at Facebook, and, and it get, keeps me abreast of what's going on because it's it's such a huge array across the board that if you have any interest, MWR is going to is going to meet that interest. Excellent, and that's that's one of our aims as well. Um, so can you tell us uh, about maybe some of your favorite MWR events? Sure, I I will uh, spent eleven years, almost twelve years, living in Germany. Okay. So I think one uh, of my favorite, I think I obviously, know. is going to yeah. be Oktoberfest. Ours too. Yeah. Uh, always have enjoyed uh, that atmosphere, and uh, we've got a long lineage and, and ties with the Germans here in Fort Bliss, and we've been able to use that that uh, background and that experience to really have a really high quality Oktoberfest. So that's one of my favorites. Uh, do appreciate some of the things that we do uh, for uh, outdoor activities. So some of the runs that that are offered. Uh, and we're getting ready to do one coming up, the Run for the Fall with SOS, which is another qu high quality event. So, um, you know, it'd be, it'd be unfair for me sometimes to pick just one, but sure. I think the Oktoberfest is my, probably my most favorite. I can understand. Yeah, it's a pretty good. And I purposely stay away from the, the, the massacre in Marshall Road. And because, we have noticed, sir. Right, because it's very scary, and I never want to get uh, a picture taken of me hiding behind my wife. Fully understand. Um, and so what significant changes do you expect here at Fort Bliss over the next five years, say? You know, I don't see a whole lot of changes here at Fort Bliss, and I think that's a great thing for us. I think I see a lot of continuity, uh, not significant changes in terms of the size of the installation, uh, the units that are going to be on the installation. So I think this, what I see is uh, the status quo in terms of uh, a lot of things on the installation. Uh, but I do see, uh, while the, the installation may not change, I think, the level of service and how we deliver those services might change just a little bit. You know, we're automating a lot. We're trying to uh, use a lot of our uh, webs access to, to publicize what we got, got going on across the installation. So while I don't see the, the changes significantly, I think how we deliver services might change just a little bit. Excellent. Um, so what about your uh, tenure here at Fort Bliss um, has made you, would you say, the most proud uh, to have been the garrison commander here? You know, it's not really well known that the size and scope of what it, the, the garrison is. And, and we have, uh, depending on the time of season, there's about 3,000 employees, whether or not they're contractors, DA civilians, or, or, or uniform members of, of the Army that make the garrison run. And I just, uh, what I'm most proud of is the work that they do day in and day out that really goes um, unnoticed and, and sometimes unappreciated. So to be a part of an organization that has the width and breadth of what the garrison does uh, and be able to be a part of an organization where people are genuinely caring about the, the service they deliver, how they deliver it, and making sure that the, it's, it's t we're taking care of the people that live, work, and play here at Fort Bliss, I think that's what I'm most proud of. Uh, we're very proud uh, to be a part of that uh, overall system yeah. uh, as MWR. And I am super happy <laughs> that you came down and you Thanks, did this Chris. interview. Really appreciate I, it. Really, it means a lot to us. Yeah. Um, and thank you for everything that you've done as a garrison commander and all the support that you've given personally to the events and to all the programs and yeah. facilities. It really you guys do a such a great job. It's easy to do. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of On the Radar with Fort Bliss MWR. Before I let you go, I just need to tell you about two things. Um, coming out on the 1st at every MWR facility across Fort Bliss. You'll be able to pick up the monthly calendar card. Don't forget to pick one of those up. On the back of those, uh, all the events uh, for, for the month are going to be listed, and so you'll have all the information you need for the whole month in one card. Put it on your fridge, keep it with you. The other thing is, if you don't know already, we publish here at uh, Fort Bliss MWR Marketing a quarterly magazine called The Bliss Now, and inside you can find maps to get you around post and you can find articles uh, about pertinent information that's happening within this quarter and, uh, and beyond. So um, once again, thank you so much for tuning into On the Radar with Fort Bliss MWR and uh, we'll see you guys again next week.